Good morning. We welcome all of you today in the name of our Lord, a special welcome to any guests we have with us today. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. On Thursday, the women of the ELCA were having a great gala, and you're all invited to, uh, to be part of the presentation and the evening's activities. And then the following weekend, the last weekend of the month, uh, it'll be Welka Sunday. There's going to be an opportunity to see uh, all of the quilts that have been made over this past year and also uh, taken behind the scenes of how those quilts get made. So you want to keep those two dates uh, on your calendar and, and uh, join them on, on Thursday. I uh, want to again extend our thanks to everybody who helped with God's Work Our Hands Day and packing all the meals and being at the various places that we served in the community. And also to uh, Cindy Halavin and all of our education folks who put on the great safari last week. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think the adults had as much fun doing it as, as the children did. So uh, that was a great weekend as well. Uh, new class starting between worship services today on the immigration and refugee crisis. So you might want to join us. There are books available. Uh, for a donation of $10 if you so choose. And uh, we'll be meeting in the patio room beginning around 9.45 or thereabouts. So uh, please join us in the conversation about what's happening in the world regarding uh, migration of, of folks from various places. We invite you now to stand for the confession and forgiveness and please face the cross. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the, the strength of our ancestors, the host of this meal, the builder of the city that is to come. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin to the one who is faithful. O Lord, you love and care for us, the sheep of your fold. You provide for us and nurture us with the food of your presence and the waters of your grace. Still, O oh Lord, we wander astray, as if we did not need your love. Still, O oh Lord, we wander astray, as if we could live this life on our own. Forgive us, Lord, and call us back, with a gentle word and a reminder of your promises. Forgive us, Lord, and call us back, with a shepherd's crook, and a glimpse of your providence. For we fear we cannot find our way home without the sound of your voice to guide us. There is rejoicing in heaven when sinners repent. Put your trust in these promises. God will never leave you or forsake you. You who were lost have been found. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Rejoice with the angels at this good news. Amen.
God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may re reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Do we, by chance, have some little people here? Hello. I see some of you coming up. Hey, guys. I was stopped cold last, last week or a couple weeks ago. I had fish crackers to give, and I gave fish crackers, and someone was like, we're allergic to fish crackers. Just take that back. So there's no food today. But... I do have something that I put, so this is what our whole, our whole time is going to be up here. So, not down here, but starting here, and anywhere up here, I have hidden some money. It's a big dollar. Well, it's not that big, it's a dollar. So, but I've hidden the dollar, and it's up here someplace, and I want you to see if you can find it. If you find it, you can keep it. So, go ahead, you can look all around up here. You don't have to move anything, it's in plain sight. You can see the dollar. I want you to go look for the dollar. You may join them if you'd like. <laughs> I realize what's at stake here. Anybody see it? There's a dollar up there someplace. And it's in plain sight. You can look at it and you can see it. It's right there. 
There's a dollar someplace up here, from this level up. I think she's going to find it. No? You found it. It actually wasn't the bush. Come over here. Good job. It was kind of folded up so it looked like a bird. So come on down here now. Let's talk about this for a second. Uh, sometimes it's not just about finding something like a dollar, but it's sometimes about who's doing the looking. So today we're going to hear the story that Jesus tells about how people are searching for something and they look and they look and they look and they find it right but they keep searching till they find it how did you feel when you were looking for that dollar anxious, anxious right and, re- and why why did you feel anxious about uh, that because it was hidden right that's part of it but is it because you really wanted to find it right because everybody was playing the same part we we're all looking for it we really wanted to now that feeling that you had like, am I going to find it? I'm looking for it. I really want to find it. Now multiply that by a million, and that's how God feels about searching for you. God wants to search for you so much more than you search for that dollar. God is always looking out for you and searching for you and waiting to see if you're noticing that he's looking for you. Isn't that great that we have a God of the whole universe who looks out for us and looks after us and is always trying to make sure that he's got his eye on us and knows where we are. It's an amazing thing. So listen close in the story today about those people who are out searching and how important it is when they finally found the thing that they were looking for. Pretty important lesson today. So let's have a prayer. Ready? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for always searching for us. Help us search for others that might be lost. It's in Jesus' name we pray and play and search. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Now, for those of you who might be at 1045, remember that there's going to be another dollar bill. Don't tell them where it's at. That's just not right. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 1 Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A number of years ago, um, my wife was getting ready and she couldn't find her wedding ring. We looked all over, high and low, for days and for weeks. And probably after a month had gone by, I said, look, let's just forget it. We'll go get you a new one. So we went to the jeweler and got her a new wedding ring. And of course, it was nicer and more expensive than the original. Well, another month went by or so, and all of a sudden, I come home one day, and she says, honey, look what I found. I found my ring. And I said, well, that was a really good way of getting a new ring, wasn't it? (laughs) So we took the new ring and the old ring and we wet them together and now she has 
one ring, both the old and the new. Well, it is about finding things. That's what the gospel is about today. And Jesus tells the parable because he's trying to help the religious leaders understand why he's hanging out with the sinners, the tax collectors, the, the people who are seen as less than, the least, the last, the lost and why he's not hanging out so much with the righteous, the people of status, the people of stature. And so he tells the parables, and one of the great things about Jesus' parables is that we can be any of the people in the parable. So as for instance, we, we could be that sheep or that corn. We could at some point have been that person who was lost, who maybe gave up on God, who maybe gave up on the church, who, whose circumstances were so dire that we decided that we didn't need this whole church thing, this whole God thing anymore and that we were lost, we were separated from God. Or maybe it's just that nobody ever told us the story and so we weren't lost because it was of any reason of our own other than we were just never connected in the first place. Sometimes we, we can be the seeker, the, the shepherd or, or the woman seeking after those people in our lives whom we have lost. Happens all the time, right? We, we find a, a family member who, who finds themselves down and out and disconnected from family. We, we try our best to, to get them some help, the help that they need. Maybe they need to be in some kind of recovery program because they're experiencing addiction. And we continue to reach out and reach out and reach out and try to get them help. We hope, we hope that someday they'll hit bottom and, and will will themselves take our advice and our hope for them. So we continue to search, we continue to seek, we continue to look for ways that we might make a difference for them. Son or daughter or father or mother or aunt or uncle or cousin or close friend. And then we can also be the one coin or the one sheep that is found. That, that finally God some way, somehow, either through someone or some experience, gets through to us. And finally helps us realize what kind of relationship God wants with us and so brings us back into the fold or reunites us with the other people of value to make community whole again for us. Maybe, maybe we're the, the sheep or the coin who, who finds our way back and gets connected and finds joy in that, in being reunited. And then maybe we're just the extended family or the community or the congregation or the church, which is part of that group of people that rejoices when we've reached another person, when, when that person who has been lost has been found and not anything to do with us, but we rejoice with one another over that person who's been reunited with our community of faith or with our family or with our community. 
and we celebrate. But my real suggestion to you today is for you to think about the shepherd and the woman as Jesus. For really, that's Jesus' point here. That I'm the one who's doing the seeking. I'm the one who's going after everyone and desires to have them included in my flock and reunited with everyone who has value in my eye. I'm, I'm the one who continues to pursue each and every child of God to hopefully have them connect with me and know that our relationship is the most important of all. Our relationship and the relationship that we must and need to have as community of faith, as people of God. I know that there's in the church widely among particularly mainline denominations, but also among and especially ELCA churches and our church body as a whole who are wringing our hands who are saying, what's going to happen to us? We're, we're aging. Our worship attendance is declining. Just here, we used to have over 600 at worship not too many years ago. And now we have about half that number on a regular basis. Used to have like 200 kids in Sunday school, and now we have about 30. We had confirmation classes of 50, and now we'll have 10. And, and we, look at, we look at how the church is being supported financially, and we discover that about 80% of our giving comes from those who are over 65. And we get anxious, and we get nervous, and we get, we get concerned about what's going to happen. How will we survive in another 20 or 30 years? What we fail to see is that in the past, we had a lot of things going for us. We had a baby boom and a post-war response to feeling like we won. We, we had a culture who believed that it really was important if, if you were a, a, a good person and a good citizen to be part of a church. We had children that grew and grew our communities of faith. And we had extended families who stayed pretty much in place. And grandma and grandpa would count noses to make sure that children and grandchildren were in the pew. All of those things are no longer present in our world today. None of those things are present in our world today. We, we have a culture that says, church isn't that relevant to me. We have, a, we have a culture that says, my community is virtual. I don't, I don't need people-to-people -people contact to have community anymore. Grandma and Grandpa don't have the influence they used to have because, frankly, the kids aren't here. They move away. They take jobs elsewhere. Oh, yeah, they show up once in a while for Christmas or Easter, but on the whole, they're not 
physically here to have their noses counted. All of those things have, have affected what we have seen as the historical decline of the mainline churches and the ELCA. So what's the solution? What's the answer? Do we just throw in the towel and say, well, last one here, shut out the lights? Unfortunately happened in many congregations. Or do we take seriously Jesus' example today and become more active in helping people see the value of being part of a worshiping community, the value that we see, and inviting that? Do we become proactive in making a difference in the lives of others and, and telling them what joy that we experience and what difference faith community makes to us and we invite you to join us. In reality, we, we must become what Jesus demonstrates in this parable, people who go out to seek the least, the last, the lost, and those who need a faith relationship with Jesus and his church. So in reality, it's on us. It's, it's on us to be those searchers. And it's on us to celebrate every time one of those folks comes among us. Today, we, we welcome Blake and Dean as part of our baptized community of faith. How will we support that family as if they were our extended family? And how might we rejoice that they become part of our community of baptized children of God? For you see, that's where it begins for all of us in baptism. It's there that, that we have been found and made part of Christ's church. It's there that Jesus says, you are mine and I will never leave you or forsake you no matter how hard you try to get away from me. And at this table, we are strengthened through his meal. And we are strengthened to go out and to be seekers of those who need to be found. And it's all about amazing grace. It's not about what we do, but it's pointing to the grace of Jesus that makes a difference and changes people's lives. It's the gospel. It's the good news. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. And it's an interesting story because the person who wrote it went blind. But before he went blind, he was a ship's captain. And a ship's captain that not only sailed the seas, but sailed slave ships. And it finally dawned on him as he was seeing the reality of slavery that he became an abolitionist. And even as he was losing his sight, he was seeing that God was, was at work in him and was at work in the world. So we see God's grace active in our lives. And we rejoice around the table today for that grace. And it gives us a chance to go out and be the people celebrating that 
with those who need to hear it. Amen. Gathered as sisters and brothers in Christ, let's affirm our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Sustained and nurtured by our generous God, we gather as one to pray for the church, 
the world, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, bless all church leaders in their ministries, especially Bishop Eaton and Bishop Clements, Pastors Len and Scott, and Deacon Marty. May they, along with all church leaders throughout the world, proclaim your gospel through their faithful leadership and living. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the pro protection and preservation of our environment. Many of your people throughout the world live in places damaged by natural disasters. Today, we ask for your loving arms to surround all of those and those who have been affected by Hurricane Dorian. Restore balance to deserts, oceans, polar regions, and temperate areas. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Ruler of all nations, instruct all the world's people, nations and governments, in ways of justice, mercy, and peace. Lead us away from the idols of power, war, self-centeredness, and fear. Hold in your care those who serve to protect this nation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, show mercy to the lost. Welcome to the outsiders and comfort to the suffering and dying. We pray for all who need your healing and constant presence, especially Fred, Gary, Gary Michael, Michael, Dottie, Dottie Irwin, Naomi, Richard, Julie, Marlon, Mackenzie, Peggy, Isla, Jamie, and family and friends of our Savior's Lutheran Church. Phyllis, Caitlin, Jennifer, Pastor Troy, Cindy, Jasmine, Claire, Pastor Jane, Sterling, Gil, Bruce, Elijah, Sheila, Eva, and all that we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen those who work with people in crisis, firefighters, police officers, hospital staff, chaplains, nurses, doctors, emergency responders, staff and counselors in rehab centers, and women's shelters. Give to them wisdom and compassion so that those in need are well supported and cared for. Lord, in your mercy. Children are a special gift from your loving hand. It is with joy that we join Eric and Katrina Burnett in the baptism of their sons, Blake Allen and Dean Charles. We ask for your guidance in Dean and Blake's life. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the beloved sheep of your fold who have died and who now find life in your eternal glory. May your loving presence bring comfort to the family and friends of Naomi Hagen. Embrace us as we hope and rejoice in your unfailing redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Assured by your promise to hear us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment to share that peace.
us pray. God, our provider, we bring nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it, except the gifts you have give first given us, which we bring to your table, and with them the offering of our lives. Nourish us now with the life that really is life, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is time to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out, uh, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Table is set, and all are welcome. Please be seated.
watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Come home. Let us pray. God of blessing at this table, we have seen you face to face, and in the gift of Christ's body and blood, our hearts have been refreshed. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we have received, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Almighty God bless you with grace, mercy, and peace now and forever. Amen. Amen.
and teach, to grow, share, love, and inspire. Thanks be to God. Thank you.